Um, we understand the community's concern over this incident and the desire to have as much information as possible and as quickly as possible. Uh, as you know, any investigation involving a death such as this includes thorough and detailed interviews with witnesses, gathering and examination and analysis of evidence, and preparation of appropriate reports. Uh, the Alameda County Coroner's Office is carrying on their independent investigation of the cause of death as well. We have significant constraints in place, though, regarding the immediate release of information in the case such as this. We can't really comment on specific details, incident-related details, to this case. We have a long history of working with the mobile crisis team, and uh, uh, I think a reputation in the community in terms of a sensitivity to mental health issues, and working with those and responding to those who are in some sort of mental health crisis, just in a general sense. <clears throat> Furthermore, we're increasing our level of service and expertise in this area through the implementation of the department's new CIT program, which I believe you, Mr. are getting very aware of. You have that two, training is two. Two officers have been, and probably only one will be participating in the program. So, thank you for putting out the effort. I don't believe you're correct in that. I think there's a lot more training anticipated. I saw a training order today in which I think authorized the training of seven sergeants and seven or eight officers for a several day training. So, I believe you're just incorrect well, in then that. that's new and news I, uh, that Jeff Shannon didn't share. Okay. He well, said I, you had interviewed a lot. But the, that you had only one, one officer who was secure. I'm sorry. sorry. So I so pulled off from discourse right now and, and let the, uh, <coughs> the uh, captain's report. So at any rate, a thorough investigation takes time. I think you're aware of that. We're obliged to wait for the evidence to be examined, the facts to be determined, and the investigation to be completed. We're committed to conducting a sensitive and thorough investigation fair to everyone involved, from the family and friends of the decedent to the officers and firefighters who worked to save the decedent's life. Um, I am sorry in the sense that I wish I could share specific incident related details to this, uh, but I can't. Um, I think the, uh, the information I just provided you and the sort of position I provided you is, uh, is honest and, and fair, and I hope you'll understand that as far as that goes. You, uh, have instructions to not talk about the specifics of this case. Um, and with that in mind, I um, I wonder whether you could share with us who exactly within the police department is conducting the investigation. And if you don't have the names of the officers, if you could tell us what body is conducting the investigation. Our detective division personnel are conducting the investigation. Okay. And under what regulation can you not share um, uh, specifics of this investigation um, and what is the language of that regulation so that we understand the limit um, of what kinds of questions we can ask you? Well, I, I, um, I think there are a myriad of, of, uh, of concerns. Um, we have a, a, a sense of investigation. There are privacy concerns on the part of those involved in terms of community members. Um, there are specific um, so there are specific uh, issues as far as that goes, where we're not able to share information, flat out not able to share information. Just as, for example, I can't share information about criminal history, I can't share information about probation and parole status, I can't share information about uh, if a person's in assisted housing. I understand Those that, but the that. subject is deceased, so she doesn't have privacy laws that, that, that cover her any, any longer. From my understanding, the, the decedent, though, has family, I would think there are privacy issues uh, associated with that. I don't think so. I'm sorry about that. But okay. um, what are what so what are what exactly? It would really help, I think, us as a commission and the community because they are so concerned about this incident to understand, and I think frustrated about the lack of information that they're getting to understand what it is exactly. What police regulation? What internal regulation? What what state law? What federal law? What are you citing that's preventing you from sharing, even whether or not there was a CIT officer on the scene? Um, so I don't have that off the top of my head. Okay. Uh, I'm perfectly willing to take back specific questions such as the CIT officer on the scene issue. That would that be sort of great. I'd be glad to take that back. Okay. And um, I don't know if it would be appropriate I can take that back or if the commission can in writing. Whatever way you'd like, I'd be glad to take that back. So I would be happy, or maybe the commission chair can collect questions and um, any, I don't know how we, how we want to do it, but we would, um, that would be great if we can provide specific questions to you. Mm -hmm. um, also, if um, in that, since you don't have I know I realize I'm putting you on the, stop, but on, on the spot, but if you could also provide to us what, um, 
what um, legal standards you're using, internal regulations, whatever, in terms of when you're deciding to pri provide information or when you're deciding to not disclose it. Right. I think one of the key points is just the investigation is ongoing. So providing bits and pieces of an investigation uh, is problematic. Um, the other rights that attach to this would be the right of our personnel. Um, is a personal investigation? Yeah, I don't you think that attached? Absolutely. I don't think any of us are interested at this point in hearing names. Yeah. I, that, that's fine. Yeah. But in general, yeah, um, it is still the, the, the still those personal rights that are associated. Got it. Um, and then uh, another question I had is if you could share, whether today you could share this or maybe in writing, whether you could share what the protocol is um, when uh, when you have a 5150s, I think, is that what it's called, a mental health crisis, 5150? Um, what the protocol is in terms of what your officers are supposed to do. So not speaking about this case. Yes, generally. Generally speaking. Mm -hmm. um, uh, our officers uh, under 5150, the Welfare Institution Code, can um, commit a person against their will for a 72-hour psychiatric hold. Mm -hmm. The City of Berkeley also has mobile health crisis team members mm -hmm. who will do that same thing. We've collaborated with that team for at least 20 years that I can think of. It's, I can't remember the time when we didn't have mobile crisis. Mm -hmm. So um, the, the actual protocol, uh, again, not not just in this situation, but in general, mm -hmm. um, is that um, if, if resources are available, at the officer's discretion, they wish to use them, uh -huh. and they are heavily used in general, I would say, then the officer simply gets on the radio and, and uh, asks for that. And how, do you, how does an officer decide that it's a, a mental health crisis situation? Uh, based on their assessment of what's going on. So they decide that once they get there, not prior to arriving, <coughs> or does it depend on the situation? I would say it always depends on the situation. And the information we get on the front end of a call, in general, can't be relied upon necessarily. We expect our officers to go to assess based on their training experience, and often you're going to have more than one officer, okay. work through an issue, assess a situation, and determine what action should be taken. Okay. And um, and then do you uh, do you have a time? You know, you, I know that you that you want to you want to resolve this quickly, and we certainly want to resolve this quickly. I wonder if you give us a tentative timeline. I can't, and one of the main reasons for that is we're subject to the timeline with the Alameda County Coroner's Office. Oh, and, and do so, they, is there any statutory timeline that they have, or that you I'm have? not aware of a statutory timeline. In fact, uh, frustratingly, perhaps the opposite. So um, it would. I mean, an integral element of an investigation and an assessment of what happened mm -hmm. would be the determination of the cause of death, mm -hmm. uh, and um, the coroner. That's the coroner's investigation that happened. So it's an important component. I think it'd be irresponsible for us to make uh, to uh, to make public uh, information without having that component in place because we wouldn't know what the coroner said about it. Sure. Um, okay, and th those are all the questions I have on the, about the investigation. I have one brief comment, is, um, and it's. Uh, based only on um, on information that I've received from community members, um, not regarding the timeline, but actually regarding the um, gender identity of the deceased, and that in fact um, that she was a self-identified woman and not a man. I don't know the, I don't know, know the veracity of that statement. I don't expect for you to. Um, to respond to it, but if that were the case, because of the sensitivities of the LGBT community and that respect for her, um, for her or his um, gender identity, I hope that that at least um, at least that can be determined, and we can refer to her or him in her um, proper gender form in the future. And I am very much involved with the public information officer function in this department. Okay. And I can tell you, we made no comment one way or the other about uh, anybody involved in this case. Right. We I, only that. Yet. Only that it was a man, a large man. We, that's the press release. That's the, yeah, press, release. That's the press release. I guess uh, I have been asked other questions uh, regarding that person, okay. and we have no comment. Absolutely not. And we have offered none to the media, so um, we, information has been attributed to us in media coverage, mm -hmm. and that's a that's not our fault. Sure. I'm and referring happens, only to the press release and to the comments made by the chief during our last meeting. Mm -hmm. And just, and you know, I don't know. I'm just saying that if that were the case, that. I, I would hope that we would um, respect her and her. Absolutely. That's all the questions I have. Thank you, <clears throat> Thank you Commissioner Duvall. Uh, before any other uh, commissioners uh, uh, ask Captain Greenwood questions, if, if Captain Greenwood is not able to answer any questions right now, just mark them down and we will ha have it 